Hi and welcome back to a new video. Today I'm using Art Anthology Paints for a new art journal page and I'm creating a Make-A-Wish page and I start out by putting a whole bunch of yellow, orange and red colors onto my art journal page and as you can see there's no rhyme or reason to it. I'm just smearing everything on there, starting to blend them um, together just to create like a, uh, yeah, a colorful background basically. And I'm using all different shades of the same color family just because um, I didn't want to risk to get any brown spots or anything and it's always easier um, when you use colors from the same family which is yellow, oranges and red. They all fit very well together and I don't need to worry about mixing anything accidentally. So in what I'm doing here, I really randomly just smear the paints onto my um, page and then, so I'm go always going from light to dark and at the end I'm taking some of the lighter colors again to just blend the darker colors a little bit more in. Because these paints are um, not opaque, they're more translucent, you can see through the layers, which makes it really interesting. And especially now here, when you see me stenciling to create a little bit more interest for the background, um, you can see the layers underneath it. And that's why it's these paints are super interesting to create like really layered backgrounds and to, to work with the backgrounds in with those paints. So, and to, again, to create more interest for the background, I'm using different stencils and I'm using more the darker colors to blend them in. And for the blending, I'm actually just using um, a regular makeup sponge. You can use also like the um, distress ink tools, the ink blending tools from Ranger. You can use um, a brush, you can use your fingers. That is really all on you. I like the makeup sponge because I have a lot of control about um, how much paint I get onto the or through the stencil because I don't want the paint going underneath it and then have like a whole big color blob there. That's no fun. <laughs> Next, I take some tissue paper and um, I already have some tissue paper laying around here that has uh, certain shapes and I take circles, squares and stars and just adhere them onto the background. Again, because I'm still working on the background, I'm trying to stay within the same colors. I know it seems like you don't see them right now, but um, you, I will work with them a little more to make them show up on the page a little bit more um, after I'm done adhering all of them onto my page. And I'm just using regular gel medium, uh, add a little bit gel medium onto the page, put the little tissue paper on top of it and then add some more gel medium on top so it's really sealed and um, perfect on the page and I don't need to worry about it going anywhere. And that all edges are also adhered down to the page and not like flying around, um, which is very important for me at least. <laughs> So now I'm really randomly um, adhering them onto the page. Some overlap, some are standing on their own, and um, on some of them I mix circles and squares, so I'm really random with what I'm doing here, and I'm not too careful um, about how it looks like. So now step one on making the tissue paper show a little bit more. I'm using a white gel pen and just add some lines and some dots around it. And um, again, really random here. And on some of them, I go on the outside, some are on the inside. I just wanted to make them, so I, I just wanted to be able to see those pieces. Next up, I wanted to add a little bit more shading to those areas and I'm taking a black Faber-Castell gelato and really carefully add just a little bit of black around the shapes. Uh, I could have went with the gelato directly onto the paper or with a, just with a random black pen or black watercolor pen or pit pen or whatever, but I wanted to have it as light as possible. And you see me go off the side all the time and that's because I'm adding more water to my brush to really blend it out because I, I don't want to have sharp edges. I want to have it as a really light shade around it. So and here you can see I'm always picking up just a little bit of paint, then go off to the side, grab the water or more water and then blend it out even further. And I'm going around because I layered those shapes, so I'm trying to stay true to the layers that I have. So for example, for the circles, you see that I have the shade around the entire small circle, but the larger circle that is underneath it, um, I'm just having the shade in the part that are not overlapping with the smaller circle, if that makes sense. I hope it does. <laughs> Basically, really trying to work with the layers um, and showing through the shading, showing how the layers are really um, aligned. 
So in this time for the art journal page, I really wanted to have some texture. So I'm using the stone effects in um, bone stone and um, applying it through the star stencil on three different areas. And I love because this one is opaque and it has like a gritty sandy texture to it. So really when it dries, it sinks a little bit down and you have like an uneven texture, like, like an actual stone on your art channel page. And I loved it. And as because the theme is stars of this page, I had to have some more stars there um, just to make them look a little bit more dimensional and add some more of those. So next up, while the paste is drying, I'm taking uh, two different minks, one turquoise and one blue one, and coloring my lace. And that's really easy. You just need to dribble a little bit of the minks onto your lace and then just mush it all around. They, uh, you have to be a little careful. My fingers are all blue now. I'm a little smurf. <laughs> So you have to be a little careful with it colors your hands. It goes off after you washed your hair or whatever, or just used good dish soap. It goes away. But in case you don't like it, just wear some um, gloves during that time. So and after everything was dry and I'm matering it with, again, regular gel medium. And then I'm taking a burlap star and it was already cut in shape. So I got, got those in that shape. I didn't do it myself. Um, that will probably be a huge mess for me. <laughs> And just take uh, a lot of gel medium and press the gel medium really into the star so it gets some grip to that page. And then I'm going into decorating. I'm using some um, banners that I had laying around. These are, I think, Heidi Swap paper banners. Adhere them underneath the star and then just um, decorate the page a little bit more. And because burlap is sometimes a little bit difficult to work with because it has difficulty sticking to a page, I'm adding just a little bit more gel medium onto the areas. But I try to not mush it around too much because I want to adhere something on top and I try to stay in those areas so you don't see the gel medium too much. Before adhering my little uh, creepy person, I'm adding the dazzle effect. Uh, paint onto the burlap and that dries clear and leaves like a gold shimmer on top. I love that. That's one of my favorite uh, paints or effect pastes or however you want to call it from Art Anthology and I love it. it you see it in the pictures later on. It ha leaves an amazing effect. I'm just, as you can see, I'm as you can hear, I'm a huge fan. <laughs> then I'm adding my paper pieces on top and that's a little ticket that I had laying around randomly and one of those creepy ephemera pieces from Tim Holtz, uh, Paper Dolls, I think it's called. And um, so I tear all of those and then I'm adding a little frame around and as you can see, it got a little too dark. So I applied the Faber-Castell Gelato directly on top and then I decided, oh, wow, this is way too dark and it's hard to blend out. So I'm just taking some water and remove a lot of it. So it blends a little bit nicer with the page. And then I continue using a brush instead of direct um, and apply the gelato with water onto the page instead of applying the gelato directly onto the page. But here you can see that you can really um, get different effects, effects depending on how you apply the gelato paste if you do directly or just with water and use it as a watercolor pen. Anyway, I'm going around the border because I wanted to create a little bit frame to draw the eye into the middle and I try always to do that. It's just a trick that um, helps focusing. So if you look on the page, it helps you focus on where you want to look at. And if you create like just a settled frame around a page, it helps that a little bit more. Some final adjustments, just again, my white gel pen. And then I'm also using a black Faber-Castell pit pen just to outline a few things, add a few dots um, and to add a little bit more interest to the page. And then I'm done with my Make-A-Wish art journal page. I hope you enjoyed today's project. Feel free to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave me a comment. I always love to read what you think about the projects that I'm preparing for you. And then I hope I see you with my next video. Bye.